As COVID-19 took hold of Britain this spring, many emergency traffic measures have been introduced up and down the country in response to the predicted traffic increases. While cycle lanes have heavily featured in Southampton's plans, other parts of the country, most notably certain London boroughs including Hackney and Lambeth, have invested in another method of encouraging active travel. Low traffic neighbourhoods involve the principle of preventing through traffic from cutting through a residential area to avoid main roads, yet still allowing every resident within that area to access their home via the road network. In this example, there are a number of residential roads that can be cut through to avoid the main roads around the perimeter. Solving this problem is typically done by installing modal filters at key locations dividing the neighbourhood into impermeable blocks for motor vehicles, but continuing to allow those on foot or bicycle to travel any way they want. So while this isn't strictly cycling infrastructure, it is a key tool for ensuring that streets remain safe for those cycling and walking in places where dedicated cycling infrastructure may not be necessary or appropriate. In late 2019, Residents of St Denny's were consulted over plans to create Southampton's first active travel zone, a low traffic neighbourhood in all but name, as a way of alleviating traffic problems in the area. St Denny's Road is one of three main crossings over the River Itchen, leading towards Cobden Bridge, Bitten Triangle and Middenbury. The problem is that there are two residential roads parallel to St Denny's Road, North Road and Priory Road, meaning that at busy times some drivers will use these residential roads to bypass the traffic on St Denny's Road. Likewise, some rat running drivers may use Kent Road as a way of bypassing Portswood Road and the Thomas Lewis Way Junction. The consultation resulted in a number of planned changes, the first stage of which being the installation of two modal filters to help prevent this rat running. The roads south of St Denny's Road are already in an enclosed space, with access to Horseshoe Bridge removed at least a decade ago. The installation of a modal filter along North Road removes one of the parallel rat runs from St Denny's Road. In addition to the required motor vehicles prohibited sign, a more positive green sign based on a design by Sarah Berry has been attached to the planters encouraging people to cycle, walk and wheel. A filter to prevent rat running along Priory Road to the north is due to be installed at a later time. Another modal filter has been installed at the north end of Kent Road, either side of the railway and Thomas Lewis Way bridges, to prevent traffic from Portswood Road cutting through to reach St Denny's Road. Traffic heading this way will now need to use Portswood Road or Thomas Lewis Way to reach St Denny's Road. While Kent Road now seems very quiet, with a number of pedestrians and cyclists using this route, I did encounter a number of drivers forced to U-turn, presumably as they don't live in the area and the sat-navs haven't been updated. In that sense, you could say these filters are already having the desired effect for residents. In London, the introduction of low traffic neighbourhoods has been labelled a culture war in certain quarters. Schemes have often been sabotaged by individuals, by vandalising signs and planters, to damaging AMPR enforcement cameras. Thankfully, the response to the scheme so far seems to have been fairly muted with no apparent vandalism. A brief Twitter search for St Denny's shows mostly positive comments. I guess that this is because the scheme was fully consulted prior to COVID-19, rather than being introduced swiftly as an emergency measure. Active travel zone schemes also enjoy cross-party support within Southampton, with opposition leader Dan Fitzhenry stating that he supports these types of schemes in principle. While the Southampton Conservatives have pledged neighbourhood calming schemes should they take power, alongside other policies that some might see as being aimed towards encouraging motoring rather than active travel.
Elsewhere in the city, more modern neighbourhoods such as Lord's Hill were designed with low traffic neighbourhood principles in mind, as can be seen with the road layouts. It'll be a while before we start to see official results. There will be other improvements, such as continuous footways along St Denny's Road and a parklet on Priory Road, but the initial impact is promising. The start of the scheme also coincided with the announcement of Southampton City Council receiving £1.225 million from the second phase of the Department for Transport's Active Travel Fund. This money will partly be used to fund two further active travel zones within Southampton, in the Polygon and the area around St Mark's School in Shirley. A full breakdown and analysis of the Council's Active Travel Fund bid can be found in the description below. It's early days, but active travel zones may well be the future of residential areas within Southampton, regardless of who ends up in power after next May's local elections. <laughs>